Hi. Let's start with some team news. Uh, in particular, N'Golo Kante, how serious is injury? Quite serious. We're talking about weeks, which is uh, not good news. And um, yeah, we're disappointed and sad because N'Golo was uh, super important and super fit, and he will, he will, he will be out for several weeks. And uh, same Amando is out for days, some days, but cannot play with come with us to two leads. And uh, Matteo Kovacic as well, um, still out with knee problems. And uh, Christian Pulisic had Achilles problems, but trained today. And let's see. Um, this time last week, we played the game where I gave you some names and you said no comment. So I'm not going to bother doing that this week. Yeah. But I'm just going to ask you, a week on, given that you need reinforcements and you had a couple of injuries now as well, are you frustrated that we still haven't got any business done? Are you starting to get increasingly frustrated? No, I'm the opposite of frustrated after last week's match. I'm. I'm very happy and um, very confident uh, after last week's performance because I, I saw saw a good team, very good team performance, excellent match, and like I like I told you, we we um, we work together um, about the reinforcements, but it's uh, it's uh, it's never easy, and it's uh, not that we can just wish for something and it will happen and uh, as long as the transfer window is open there are always possibilities we know what we are trying we know what we are doing but um, the focus is on what we have the focus is on not what we could have the focus for me is on what we have and this is the team and they get the full energy and full full attention from us and in terms of outgoing let's talk of christian pulisic yeah, I know there. I know there are a lot of talks. Uh, first of all, we will also not comment uh, our players, and uh, we will not encourage our players to to go out in the moment. We had like now two training sessions with 18, 18 players uh, in a schedule where we play once a week. It's not a problem. If uh, if I look a little bit, if I put the chin a little bit up and look at the schedule. Um, that is that is coming with um, Southampton in in during during the week and then two Champions League matches. It's coming. It's right in front of the door, and we will we will need a lot of players and we will need a lot of quality players to be competitive. So at the moment, um, like I said, we have what we have. We know what we're looking for, and 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 from there we go, and and only only from there we can think about letting players go. Mike Dean is now admitted that he got the Ducare Romero decision wrong. Does that add to your frustration, or do you think it's actually a good thing that VAR is now admitting that mistake? As I am not frustrated, as I told you, it yes, cannot, sorry, it sorry. cannot, it cannot add to my <laughs> frustration. Um, what was the question? Is it, a, is it a good thing that referees or VARs are, not, are now admitting their mistakes, or does it make you well? More Hopefully, I'm not too honest. But if you, if if the mistake is that big and that obvious, what's what's the chance of not? What's the point of not admitting if the whole world sees it? <laughs> I mean, I, I I struggle a little bit to 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 be fully impressed by the statement. I have to say, it is so clear and obvious that I cannot still cannot understand how a, a referee cannot make the decision that was the right decision. Just one final question. Of course, of course, of course, of course we laugh. It's very important to laugh about ourselves and of course we laugh. And I was laughing in the dressing room because it was the heat of the match and it was, for me still, it was not that bad. It was a handshake and it was a bit of too long and too heavy handshake, I admit it, but no harm was done. And uh, at least from my side, and he spoke Italian to me, so I never know. And we didn't insult each other, so I think we we could I think the thing would have been very very quickly uh, would have ended if there were not twenty yeah. people around us that that make the look that make the thing look much worse than it actually was. But you're right. I mean, if you if you if you have reaction like this, you need to live with a with a reaction towards it. And of course, we love I laughed about myself. I've seen this strictly from 
Sorry? I, I saw quite some because uh, every, every, everybody makes fun of me, of course, here in the building, as you can imagine, and it's okay. It's okay. Cheers, Jamie. Move on to me. I presume everyone's been shaking you by the hand and looking you in the face. <laughs> um, did you see anything wrong with, with that, the content? Was that just passion at the end of the game between two men? I think it was passion between two men who fought for their team. I think it was not more, and I hope it will not that they don't make more out of it. Uh, in the context that we had, of course, a hair pulling just two minutes before, uh, it seemed a bit like, uh, uh, yeah, out of, I don't know, out of, I, I don't know the word for it, it, it seemed a bit like, it, it, it's, not, it not, it's not that big a deal for me. And uh, it was about passion and nothing more. And it was like he was fighting for his team and I was fighting for, his, for my team. And, uh, as you hopefully um, felt before and before we, we we played Tottenham last season with with Conte and now I have nothing but biggest respect for him and um, and uh, this will not change because of that incident off the back of that game last week do you have you changed your view slightly that you do need an out and out center forward be that a Bamiang or be that someone else a a number nine, or you still believe, as you did a couple of weeks ago, we spoke that a false nine, a Sterling or a Havertz is the way forward. Well, I believe that we can compete with this group, but but to be very honest, it's it's one thing to compete once a week, and it's another thing to compete sixty times in <coughs> a, in a year and three times a week. And for this, you need a strong group. It's it's simply like this, and you need. You need uh, players who challenge for their place and challenge for their minutes and and push push each other to the highest to the highest level. Uh, it does not come down uh, only about tactics and and uh, only about the team spirit. It is also about about the challenge within the team and the quality of the players and and the depth in your in your squad. So that has not changed. We are like very happy about the performance still and. Um, we are still uh, active in, in, in the market and we know what, what, what can be possible, but uh, yeah, if, if not, we, we, will, uh, we will make the very best out of it. It's, it's still, if we are looking, we're looking for high quality and we're looking for also for personality that, that suits our group and suits our club. So nothing has changed. And finally for me, I don't know whether the referee gives you a, <coughs> a, an apology after a game if you've got a decision like the Cabrera one wrong. VAR obviously can't because they're, they're miles away. Yeah. Um, and then you read about it in paper four days later. Would you would you be one of those managers who subscribe to the theory that maybe not straight away afterwards, but an hour later or what have you, that we should hear now from referees about why they made a decision and if they got one wrong, like if you get a substitution wrong, you'll come out, apologise for getting a, a substitution wrong. Maybe that a referee should come out and apologise if they get a decision wrong. Yeah, I mean, in, in the decision, it's it's uh, maybe not the referee to blame in this in this decision because he he was not called to 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 the monitor. So we have to. I think we have to, by all the passion and by all the the emotions and by all the um, yeah um, consequences that it had for us, we need to um, ad admit that it has it was not the referee to take this decision. Uh, it was the VR who got it totally wrong in this case. And by apologizing, yeah, of apologizing or admitting at least, I, I think it could be a bit more transparent to make it easier for everybody. So maybe they could explain even the decisions on the field to everybody, like if they take a decision, why they take this decision. Like or like cricket, we'll be yeah, maybe, maybe to, to make it more transparent, to make it more clear what's going on and why is a goal not allowed? Why is it disallowed? Why he, he's challenging or is or he's uh, overruling his own his own own decision to understand it a little bit better. It's I think it's not it's not the end of the process yet. It's it's still um, necessary to have uh, normally <coughs> regular goals and irregular decisions um, overruled. But it's obviously obviously still work to do. Cheers. Go to John. Yes and no. Um, uh, yeah, we, we know and we know enough about him. But uh, it's it's one thing to perform on a, perform on alone. It's another thing to perform within a club like Chelsea. 
So this is the next step. While he's doing the next steps, he was injured in preseason. Now he's injured again. That does not help his own ambitions and this does not help us, of course, in, uh, in um, having a clear view on, on what he can give us. But uh, given the size of the squad at the moment, I would say it's a huge chance for Armando to, to, to have an impact at Chelsea. I understand that this is his clear uh, ambition, his clear uh, goal to have to make this step here. And so it's, it's on him. He gets full support. He has our, our trust, our support. And from here we go. But unfortunately, right now, second time that he's injured in, in a short period of time and, and hold back. Uh, for that reason. Yeah. The performance last weekend, you would say from that figure actually it's quite a good season already. People are saying they prefer the, the, the quarter up, they maybe entertain some more games, maybe doubt, doubt you would have pulled it. Well, for, the, for, for this match, um, surely. Um, it sent even a message to me. I was like, uh, I was uh, impressed how, how we played. Uh, right. About No, not surprised, but impressed uh, because we, we talked about it many times that it's a bit hard to, to, to have a clear view on where we are in this uh, period of, of time and, and with, with, with the sanctions and being in the delay and transfer period and so on. Many times we spoke about it. So I was also not sure. I, I felt that Tottenham is well prepared, got their things early done and, and was very impressive to see us perform like this over, over 95, 96 minutes was, was, was an excellent match. And, and even in the, in the data and in the review of the match, uh, it was also important for me to see that uh, we can reach this level that early. So now we set the bar high, but it's always one thing, like I said, to, to perform in one match and of course in a, in a derby and of course in a very emotional match. Um, and, and now to, uh, to, to repeat it, to repeat it on a, on a, on a high level. And, and this is, uh, these are the next steps that we have to do with the guys who, who played and, and of course with the guys who did not play so much to keep the level as high as possible. The process is not finished. Um, let's see where we are like now in, on, on Sunday. Um, not everything is finished just because we had this kind of performance, but it was very good to see. And I think it gave all of us, me included, a lot of confidence in what we do and what we are and, and made things uh, much clearer to ourselves. That will be it. We are enjoying it a lot. We are enjoying it a lot. We are we're trying new exercises. Uh, we are we preparing matches like over three, four days, which is very, very unusual for us. And uh, the, the team is very responsive. The players are very responsive uh, to it. So I'm very grateful. <coughs> and it's, it's a pure joy to have this. And uh, when the games come, it's, it's pure joy to have the matches. But um, it's, it's, it's nice that we have a kind of extended uh, preparation, a kind of extended time for us um, here in, in Chelsea coming from where we come from. It's very important and we're trying to make the most out of it. Cheers, John. Move to Alex. Hi, John. How are you? Hi. Good. I expect a high intensity game. I expect a high pressing team from Leeds and a very emotional stadium. Um, we, we had a fantastic game last season at Allen Road and, um, and scored very early. We were very dominant, very focused and, and concentrated and effective in front of goal. Of course, it was an early red card, I think, um, that played into our hands, but uh, still was a very good performance. And um, yeah, this is what we expect. Like, like I said, repetitive intensity, high pressing, um, and um, and the team that that loves that loves the chaos. A team of leads that that has a high acceptance for mistakes. Um, they don't get frustrated by mistake. They accept mistakes as chances to play counter pressing, pressing and counter pressing, and so on. So. We have to be well aware. You have, we have also to, to maybe, um, to, uh, not maybe, we have also to, to manage our expectations, our level of, uh, of acceptance for mistakes, because mistakes against these high intensive teams like, like Liverpool, like Leeds, like, like Southampton, who have a certain style of, of pressing, you, you make mistakes. <coughs> you cannot play without mistakes against these teams. So you need to accept it before the match and make the best out of it. 
find the spaces. There is not a lot of time for for decision making, and and this is what we prepare for now now in training, and and hope to be on our top level and and to 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 find the level that we had last week to be to be able to prove the statistics wrong. I did not know about it, so <laughs> thanks for <laughs> thanks for telling me. Thanks for telling. Me. I just also wanted to ask you about Mark Kukulea yeah. and Ben Chilwell. Are they competing for one place in the team, or do you envisage them playing for the same chance of playing this game? I would say if we play a back four, they're competing for the same place. If we play a back five, uh, not a hundred percent, because I think that Ben is uh, Ben a clear wing back, and Mark is both. He can play in the back three and then as a wing back. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh really? Uh, I'm not so sure if we do him a big favor if we <laughs> if we if we uh, if we join in this discussion. I just met him yesterday here in the building, and we will give him time now. We will give him time now to learn the language, to learn uh, what Chelsea is all about, to learn to understand the culture, how we how we live here, how we train here on a daily basis. And then once once he settled in, we will we will um, give him opportunity to train with us and uh, show his qualities and then we will assess him and then I have a clearer picture of him and then we will see. Okay.